Hello everyone, this is Tammy from Tammy Colors 2, and welcome, or welcome back, to another episode of Celebration of Tea and Coloring in Afternoon Tea Coloring Book by Teresa Goodrich, uh, where we color uh, in a book and drink a tea, uh, and I talk about it. If you are a tea lover, this is a great place to be. If you are a colorist, it's a great place to be, or if you just want to spend some time listening to me color and chat, this is another great place. <laughs> so... Today, I have selected for you uh, Cranberry Mango. This is a green tea. You can see what color it is. Um, and I get this one from Tea House. I do have the tea, the companies I buy tea from are listed in the description below. It's Adagio, Dominion, and uh, Tea House. Uh, they all ship, or if you live close, you can always stop, except for Adagio. I don't think Adagio, well, they might. Um, so cranberry mango is a green tea with pieces of cranberry and mango in it. You can see the mango, the mango shows up really easily. The cranberry is a little harder to see because they're darker. They're kind of like the dark browny pieces in there, if you can see them. There's the light colors, the mango, and then the darker ones right over there are the cranberry. So it's a, a very mild um, green tea. It is not grassy, in my opinion. Um, I'll even put a link to this tea in the description if you would like to check it out on the website. I haven't looked to see if Adagio has any. Um, I'm pretty sure Dominion doesn't. They're, I'm pretty familiar with their tea blends, um, but I haven't looked to see if Adagio has like a cranberry mango. Um, if, it, if they did, I wouldn't be familiar with it because I don't think I've ever gotten anything like that from them. So um, I wanted to, to let you know that it's a very mild flavor. Like it doesn't scream mango. It doesn't scream cranberry. It's a very mild flavor to the green tea because personally I like mango but I get tired of the fact that every time you buy something that has mango in it the mango overpowers whatever it is like they just it's like it's mango you know and um that's not what I want because mango is a very strong flavor um in things and it's a good flavor however if you like mango however um I don't want it to be the center of attention all the time. And that's the way it is in here. Um, this is actually a bit sour. Um, not sour, sour, but it has a, a, you can taste the mango, a hint of mango, and the cranberry gives it a little bit of sourness and it, it lends a very nice flavor to the green tea, which is a very mild green tea. It is not grassy in my opinion at all. Um, if you like green teas. So if you're wondering also about my mug, I'll have to put a picture of it in the window since I can't turn it over, but you'll notice there's a little symbol and there's writing on it. This is Quark's Bar and Restaurant. If you are familiar with Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Quark is a Ferengi that has a restaurant and bar and does all kinds of antics through the <laughs> series of Deep Space Nine. He is also in other Star Trek series. He appears. Um, the, the Ferengi are fun characters in Star Trek, and I actually purchased this mug, which can fit an entire pot of tea, by the way. <laughs> and there was an entire pot of tea in this mug, because uh, I think it's 32 ounces. It's a big mug. Um... And I actually got this from the Star Trek experience in Las Vegas, Nevada, which doesn't exist anymore. I mean, Las Vegas exists, but the Star Trek experience at um, the, I can picture the hotel, and I can't think of the name of it, but it was on towards the south end, um, Hilton, I think. It was the Hilton? Um, but anyway, 
they used to have a Star Trek experience there for years and years and years because, you know, the hotels in Vegas get things and then they have them for a while and then, you know, they change to something else. <clears throat> Personally, I think someone needs to build a Star Trek hotel in Vegas, but, you know, <laughs> <clears throat> sorry about my voice. So we are going to drink our uh, cranberry mango tea, which is fabulous. I'll try not to slurp too much. <laughs> and then uh, we are going to continue in our book. So last week we did this picture. Um, it took me two videos to complete this picture. And this was the first one we've done out of this book and I'm happy with it. I mean, is it perfect? No. Um, I used the Colorista pencils, Colorista colored pencils, the Spectrum Noir Aqua Blend, um, watercolor pencils and then I put a marker in the background and that's all that's on it um I'm happy with it for the most part however I did not like the colorista pencils on this picture so this is the next picture and I think what I am going to do is I think I'm going to use my ink tents and alcohol marker blender on this um which is a fabulous thing to use in these creative haven books is the ink tents and um alcohol marker um i really really enjoy it i watched a video a year or two ago from colorfully optimistic that taught me how to do it and it was a fabulous picture and i had a great time so i think i'm gonna do it again um so let me go pick out some colors and oh, think about what colors I want all of this stuff to be. And the grass, and it's a very springy, it looks very Valentine's-y, personally. So um, I think there's gonna be pink and pink and red in here. And maybe we'll just go all pinky, pinky ready with some brown and green for all of these things and just try to keep it simple. I need another drink of tea already. Mm. And I don't know, you probably don't care about this or you didn't even know. I created a journal to write down all the teas. So I wrote down all the ones in the Time for a Cup of Book that we went through so I could keep track of the teas that I'm showing you. Um, that way I don't repeat myself because <laughs> I realized now that I don't have a book that's, um, you know, dictating what tea is, uh, I might need to keep track of that because I drink different teas all the time. And hopefully you all will enjoy drinking the tea. I have, I wonder if it, you have to let me know if anybody has tried, um, or ordered anything from any of the places. I'm not sponsored by the places that I list. I don't get any money from it. Those are just the stores that I buy um, tea from. And I thought I would share that. Um, so let me pull out my pencils and we'll get started. Okay, so I've pulled out some um, colors. I mean, they don't look very bright or springy but you know what they might by the time we're done um so i've got <laughs> half my ink tins here um i can tell you what colors i'm using as i use them um now let me see where am i going to start bottom top i always start at the top it seems so let's do this um, I have my alcohol blender. So I have, I bought some Meaden, uh, you can get a pack of these, um, blender, colorless blenders from Meaden on Amazon. I think there's like five of them. Um, so I got a few of those. I really like using those for this. I have, obviously I've got a Arteza Everblend that came with, I've got like a whole bunch of colorless blenders. You can also buy a pack of, I think three Art and Fly. Um, and those have a brush tip. You can see where I've used this one. But, um, 
Art and Fly, you can buy a pack of their colorless blenders if you want a brush tip one. Probably others, I mean, got a million of them up here. What's this one? This must be my Gagno. Yep. So we'll have a few out. Take another sip of this. Try not to drop it. <clears throat> All right, so I'm starting at the top. So um, I don't know how many... I had to make some notes as to what color I wanted everything. So I decided the wood would be saddle brown. Let's see, so then this is my saddle brown. We're going to use that and we're going to use um, oak, I think. Where's my oak? Here it is. So these two colors. So what you do, if you've never done this before and you want to try, so I'm going to do my, let's see, this is the wood. So I decided that my trees and the wood could be the same color, didn't I? I would think so. Yeah, I don't think I wrote that down. Anyway. Um, so you color a little bit. Just like you would if you were going to use water. Oh. Start up here. And you color some, like so. And my problem is with ink tents, I am never heavy enough. Like, I never put enough color down ever <laughs> it's kind of amazing as heavy-handed as i am uh because it's not going to move the color as much so you just want to put it down <clears throat> i'm going to use my oak to kind of make some dark spots in the wood like so. Kind of use what the artist has given me to make some shadows in the wood and things like that. And then maybe put some over top. Like this. I have not really done this on camera before, let alone on my own, of my own volition. I have done it by myself. I have done it in color alongs. And we'll do this bit here. Um, I really like doing ink tints in uh, Creative Haven books. Um, even though they're single-sided, so you can use markers, but I think it, it gives you another dimension. They work well on this paper. So let me finish this one. Make this one a little lighter because it's on top of that other branch. It's kind of like watercolor. It's just not going to spread it as far. So let me... Um, Oh yeah, get in there, get in all these crevices. I might should have done the flowers first. Because we've got this little crevice in here, and this little crevice, and that sky. So then, oops, let me just go all the way up here. I get excited and I want to go up farther. And I think sometimes, well, why do you want to bother with that? I mean, wouldn't it be easier to use pencil and like, well, 
not necessarily I mean because you're gonna move this around with the alcohol marker and it has a different texture I mean they don't really feel like pastel they feel like a combination between a watercolor pencil and a pastel pencil which I need to get those out and use them more Um, I'm usually using ink tents um, when I use them I, I tend to want to put them on a palette and pull them that way and I'm trying to learn to use them from the pencil a little more I mean, you don't have to so I'm trying to put some shading in here with the oak, like that. So it would be a little darker on that side, we think. <laughs> I don't know. It's dark where I say it's dark, right? And hopefully I have put enough pigment down this time. <laughs> Uh, with any luck. Oh, I wanted to make that darker because that's under the flowers, right? Now, let's see. Make sure I get all the way up to the edge here. Oops. And I can erase it. So, I can erase that little bit on that leaf before I go over it. Just might as well finish these little bits up here. I think I am getting better at coloring on camera now. Um, it's just something that takes practice like everything else. Can't you just be born with it? I mean, I'm sure some people are. Born with the ability to not let it bother them. Just put a little few dark patches in here. All right, so I think I'm pretty good there. <clears throat> now I'll take my alcohol marker of choice to make sure the tip is clean, which I obviously didn't do a good job of. I don't know if you just use a piece of paper and wipe it off. And you just take your alcohol marker and rub it over your ink tints. And try not to go outside the lines. But if you do, it's not the end of the world. And it does pick up a little bit on the end, so you can go back over. Like, um,. I'm kind of on the fence if I just want to go back over them, like do the ink tints and then do the dark color later. So it kind of gives it a little bit of vibrancy. You get, you get the benefits of a watercolor without all the water since this paper gets a little finicky with too much water. It doesn't like water. It's hard to do this on Amazon paper, though. Even, even with the alcohol, I don't think it comes out very well. I'm kind of getting it over the line there, but I think in the end you won't be able to tell. Then, and it dries very quickly, I have a nice 
fully coated. Oh, I missed some bark there, didn't I? So I could use what's on my tip to kind of go up here since I do get a little on the tip. See? Ta-da! And I think I'll cover that over with whatever color I decide to do the sky. Oh, so that is how I do that. Now I may go back in and shade a little bit, probably at the end. I'll go back with a pencil or something. I mean, you can use your ink tents to shade. Um, I just prefer using pencils and that's my own personal preference. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. I guess I should go down here and do the base of the tree so that that entire part of the tree is done. Let's see if I can do it opposite. I'm gonna put a little, and I'm gonna try to do it heavier <laughs> because I'm always doing it not heavy enough. And I mean, you think that using ink tints would be slow, but it's actually, I mean, they go down pretty easy, so. And the tip stays forever. So. And just, and you don't have to worry about getting it, you know, down and burnishing it. I mean, I suppose that's the, you don't have to worry about all the burnishing and stuff. And that kind of saves you some time. But when I, when I first did this, um, and I did the color along with it, I was amazed. At how well these worked and how fast it was. I mean, like, boom, done. So I have my little piece of paper over here, and then you just... And I suppose it's not going to hurt anything if you don't clean it off right away because I had red on there from something from, I don't know, two weeks ago. I mean, as long as your marker stays wet, <laughs> it doesn't matter if you clean it off now or later, but you just have to do that until it's clean, comes out clean. If you're going to change colors, you don't have to clean it if you're not changing colors. Okay, so then... Um, I decided that I wanted these flowers in the trees to be like a mauve color. So I've got my mauve, and I think I'm going to put a little chili red underneath them. Or, I'm trying to decide. I love this mauve. This mauve is like one of my favorite um, colors. And like a gold, oh, uh, that's cadmium orange. I wanted a gold and yellow. And I know I got it out. Where is it? Is it this one? Gold and yellow. So I think I'm going to do the, uh, centers of the flowers here. First. Oh. That may or may not be the best way to do it. I decided I wanted purple flowers in the trees. And then, since I've cleaned off my marker, or you can have a marker for dark colors, light colors, you know, however you want to do it. And then, that way, when you come back with your mauve, and I'm going to do a few leaves up there while I'm waiting. Um, so the leaves in the trees I decided was going to be, um, let's see, bushes, grass. I don't think I decided. Um, so why don't I try 
spring and leaf and see how I like that. I mean, you know, you just get out a bunch of colors and don't think about it, right? All right, so we're going to use spring green. I just like to let it dry a little bit before I go back close to it. Make sure that that part's dry. So I thought I would do these leaves out here. Then I've got a little uh, leaf green, which is actually a dark color. And I'm putting here to kind of give them a little shading. I'll just go ahead and do that over here for now. So how is everyone uh, now that we're back in the swing of our tea videos? I think it's cool. Um, I hope everyone's enjoying. Like I said, I'm terrified that this book is going to scare people off from participating. But, you know, you don't have to color in this book. You can color anything you want. It doesn't even have to be tea-related or you can just sit and listen. As long as you're enjoying yourself. Uh, I'm trying to think of what's been going on that, uh, oh gosh. Um, the little spaces need the least amount of <laughs> rubbing. <laughs> And I always like to go from light to dark on the really light spaces, so I don't drag the dark color up too far. Um, well, you know, we've been through Christmas and New Year's, and I hope that everyone's year is starting off decent. I know that some people are still having it rough. Um, I do hope it gets better for them. Ooh, I'm liking this. I am happy, happy, happy. That gives me plenty of time to mess it up. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to use my mauve. And I'm going to do like a light color. I don't know if I've ever seen a uh, purple flowers on a tree. I guess wisteria is kind of purple. And it's it's not really, well, eh. it can be a tree, it can be a vine. <laughs> wisteria has the beautiful flowers that hang down and it's a vine. I think if I remember correctly though, it's an invasive vine. <laughs> that turns into wood so you have to be careful where you put it um, but I really want some in my yard so I actually planted some not knowing because I bought something and then I put it by the mailbox and it didn't bloom and so I've, I'm like oh I'm gonna pull that out and get something else but I mean, that was like three years ago, maybe four. And like I said, I, I threw the tag away and I didn't pay attention to what I planted. I just remember that it was supposed to bloom. And uh, it keeps coming back. Like literally, I can't get rid of it. And then I was looking at the leaves and I was trying to identify them. And that's how I figured out that, uh, oh my gosh, I think I got wisteria, which is cool. Um, but I don't want it by my mailbox because it, yeah, you need to have a place 
for it to grow and that's not a great place for it to grow unless you have a <clears throat> because it's a vine I don't really have something for it to grow on I'm gonna try adding a little bit of red um, I broke down I did I, I, I still only have the 72 set of ink tents, however, I've been waiting for them to come. I mean, how long have they been out? And I've been waiting, and I've been, you know, finally they came, and now they're sold out because, well, they sell out in five minutes because all these people are waiting in the United States. And uh, so I don't know, way, way back I had created an occult pens account and I'm like oh I'm gonna order them and then I decided no I can wait I don't need them I'm gonna wait and like I said when did they come out um so the other day cult pens was having a sale and uh I went over to check and they just happened to be having a sale because I wanted to check the price and so even with the shipping, it was still cheaper per pencil for the 28 new colors than it would have been if I bought them from Blick, even at the cheapest price. Because, you know, you have to buy so many to get the cheapest price on the pencils. So I have the 28 new colors coming. I'm excited to get them because I know there's some colors that I'll use because um, I really like these and they they last you forever I mean they're not cheap but at the same time they last a long time because you don't use very much of them at once so I feel like they're a good investment Trying to put a little pink there. That worked out well. Make some pretty flowers on the trees. This is the tedious part. <laughs> so you have to let me know what you think. Have you all done this before? Is this something new that you've never seen? I think I got a little brown on that flower. Okay. Do. Make sure I get them covered. Well, it's not like I can't go back, but you'd think. You would think. I couldn't go back and touch it again the way I'm fussing over it. Um, what did I do? Leaf in spring? Yeah. We'll do spring green. Uh, so let me ask y'all. Um, you have how you? <laughs> Let's talk about whips. <laughs> Works in progress. W I P's. Um. I have a number, and I'm gonna do a book collection. I think think though I have to have all my whips pulled out I have a little cart over here that is just for current stuff I'm working on and works in progress um, and I wonder if I should pull out a little yellow and stick in some of these maybe just for fun you know give them a little spice them up a little bit over here Especially the ones out in the sun. Give them a little something extra. Uh, so I have a number of works in progress that 
I keep avoiding for some reason. <laughs> so, and I know it's because I'm, um, oh, what's the word, intimidated by what I'm doing. And one of them is a Kirby Rosanne's picture that I started last year because I had a brilliant idea. <laughs> And I was going to do random, random, random coloring. And I even did a video. I did one video where I picked everything. And so what it was, was I did a random shelf from my coloring bookshelf. Um, a random book and a random picture out of that book. Also a random medium. And... It didn't work out, not because of the picture, but I got I had a, I ended up with a Kirby Rosanne's book, which is intimidating enough. And then I had Derwent Color Soft, and I quickly discovered that they don't like that paper. <laughs> it was terrible. They did not like the Kirby paper at all. Um, so I did some little something on there and then decided I couldn't do that and I used my Neo Colors for the first time on that page uh, my Neo Color 2's and uh, so I I never got back to it I mean just froze up did I do these? Sometimes it's hard to tell which ones you've done and which ones you haven't. Um, a little bit of yellow is pretty. So I decided I need to start working on my, I need to finish my works in progress. Either that or I just need to rip it out and get rid of it. But, um, and the other problem with that Kirby picture <laughs> is that I'm not good at coloring buildings and of course it's it's worlds within worlds and it's the the picture of all the buildings on the planet on top of the river or whatever it is and so it's like intimidating enough as it is and then I've got all this stuff going on and I'm doing it on camera and I've never done a Kirby picture before so yeah learned a lesson but I do need to finish that picture and so I even messaged I was so stuck I mean like that's that's how I get and I apologize to any of my friends whom I I ask but I mean sometimes I need to just crawl out of my head and say ask someone else to get me unstuck and that's just the way it is and I hate the fact that I always do that there's a little part right here I missed that kind of sticks out. So, yeah. So I have a giant Kirby picture that I need to finish. That is coming out nicely. I really like that. So let me uh, do this other side over here. And then we will come back. Okay, so we got the trees done. And it goes pretty fast, actually. So now, what do I want to work on? I'm trying to decide if I want to do <laughs> and just work my way towards the center like that. It's kind of appealing to me. So, uh, or I can do that wood. I feel like I can't decide what color I wanted the wood to be. I said that the wood... I had a color written down for the wood, and you are listening to saddle run and oak. Oh, okay, that's right. But I think I have a little... I think I'm going to use oak and tan, though, because I want this to be a little bit lighter um, than the trees. So, let's see. So, here's my tan. Actually, do I want oak or do I want saddle brown? I probably want saddle brown is right here let's just see you can experience how I test things out so 
I think that'll be a pretty color. Let me get a marker somewhere. Where did my marker go? Oh, no. Here it is. Yeah, I think that's the color I'm going for. Okay. Decision made. So we'll zoom in. We'll do some of this. Lovely work. And I just love how fast this goes. Uh, wood looks hard, but it's not really... Um, I was I actually learned to do wood in a color along with uh, a channel that she hasn't done a video on in forever. Simple art for adults, and it's funny. Um, she actually never finished the video. It was a world of flowers picture, and she never finished the color along, and I never finished the picture. And I keep. That's one of the whips. When I do my book collection, I'm gonna find all my whips, and I think I'm I'm gonna have to list them in a book. I don't think I have like a million whips, but and then I think this wreath will be you know how grapevine wreaths are kind of dark. I think the bark color will be a nice color for that. So you can just lay down color. And it was funny, I was thinking the other night, I'm like, this looks like crayons when you're putting it down. I know, I'm coloring like sideways. and That's the way I do though. And I, I can't really stop myself. It's hard. Does anybody have a trick for... Because I know you're not, you're supposed to color in the same direction. But that is hard to do when you're trying to get up against something. Of course, circles work. Little circles. And you can just, these are so easy to lay down. <laughs> I don't know, you might have noticed that it's a different day. This actually went pretty fast yesterday, but um, I had to make dinner and do some things and so I got the tree done and I'm like oh crap I gotta go actually do some other things <clears throat> so I'm trying to finish this up today all right of course that means I'm gonna have to figure out what color I want that to be I think I want it to be a red roof I think I decided that, I don't know when I decided that part. I could always take a darker, an even darker color and shade. I'm trying to kind of show that these are under the shing, or under the overhang here making it a little bit darker trying to uh, you know as I said I don't ever put enough pencil down when it comes to the ink tints I'm <clears throat> I think until you get used to them <laughs> or at least it was for me um, I uh, was very tentative with them and I would just put a little bit down because I was afraid that it would just be too much and it's never enough. 
as I have discovered. See if we can get this down here. I might take my. See, I'm looking for all the little knots and stuff in the wood that she put in and kind of making a few spots, you know. Like if you look at a wood floor, what it looks like down here. that that would probably be all dark in here <clears throat> I am croupy today See, like it's hard to color along this bottom line here, so I tend to want to go sideways. Okay, let's see how that looks. <clears throat> Oops, wrong one. I'm actually going to use. So I wonder where. I know this isn't the same marker I was using last night or yesterday. I wonder what I did with it. All right, uh, let's see. I need my glasses on so I can <clears throat> yeah that's a nice color for the wood see how it just I love activating it and, and making it look different kind of the fun part you know you're like ooh, look at that <laughs> it's so cool get in this crevice here and then when it dries it'll look even better so, <clears throat> I just wish that would stop with my throat. Ugh. That is looking cool. I'm liking it. Then we can go fill in any spots that we want. Later with some colored pencil. Yeah, I'm not really worried about that because it's going to be brown. Kind of got a little overzealous there and got it on my bird. I just don't want to use the little bullet nib the entire time on these large areas. I could do it in any order because it's not like it's really going to leave a line. So it's not like alcohol marker where you have to be careful where you stop. <clears throat> I don't have that much trouble with that. Yep. That's pretty. <clears throat> oh, I got to do the center, don't I? I didn't think about that. Because you can see through the wreath. Duh. I think the ribbon is going to be red. I think I'm going to be predictable. 
where that is concerned. <laughs> it's Valentine's Eve. <clears throat> now I just have to decide. So it looks like, like right here, the at the edge of the door. So this would be outside here, and then this would be inside. So I want the inside wall to be dark. So I'm probably going to use saddle brown and oak on the inside and then use um, tan and saddle brown over here so that there's a difference and it looks darker in, in this room. And I don't know about the floorboards. I haven't decided how the floorboards are going to look yet, but uh, let me finish these outer walls and I will come back. Okay, so I went through and I, excuse me, um, colored everything, all the wood. I just decided to do all the wood and then I'm going to activate it so that you can see that. And I just used my light color and then I've used the dark color to kind of do a little shadowing because you know the where the doors are open it's going to be lighter here. So you make it look dark there. Hopefully it looks good. Shadow is kind of one of those things that you just do it till it looks right. And I was trying to decide, I think I'm just going to make these hearts uh, filled in in the center. I might, I might do a wood color, but it doesn't look like there's wood. I just may make it look like there's there. If they look like they're open, then I'd have to do the wood in the back, which eh, I have to do a little wood right there too. It's fun finding all the spaces that you have to do wood color in <laughs> for these. <laughs> and it's a little bit weird because some, you know, it's like, where does it start? Where does it end? I can't really tell. But, you know, we'll just make it happen so all right so I'll do this part first I went ahead and did that because I said I'm gonna put red um, shingles on the roof so we're gonna do that first so you can watch the activation process and hopefully it looks good when we're done and hopefully all these different wood colors will come out, you know, they'll look stand out. Is that the word that I'm looking for? I use what's left on the tip to kind of fill in any marks that or any spaces that are not covered. Like there. Boom, it's so fast. It actually really doesn't take all that long. It's faster than pencil, believe it or not. Yeah. Because uh, you don't have to... Why is it faster than pencil? Uh, because you don't have to cover the whole thing and give it all the white space. or, Of course, depending on how you like it. Um, it gives you the, I like to think, it gives you the freedom of pencil, but gives you the look of an alcohol marker, if that makes sense.
So you can use this on sing on double sided pages, but you do have to be careful because depending on the paper, um, depending on the paper, it will sometimes bleed through. Like on this one, it shouldn't be. No, this one it's fine, but there are some papers where you can't even use this. Um, to be honest, <laughs> and all I did for the shadows was uh, I just use the darker pencils and they do blend in like sometimes you might want to do the it just depends on how you like doing it I think but sometimes you might want to do the the light pencil and then do the darker one I've seen people do it all kinds of different ways I just like putting them all down and then just going back with a pencil. There's no right or wrong way. It just depends on... You have to experiment and figure it out. I hope that you can distinguish between all of these wood colors. I think it'll be nice when we add all of the... Um, other colors in to make it pop and darken the some of the wood up a little bit with some pencil just throw a little bit of shading in there and I think we'll be good what else is going on today um, nothing I mean like compared to like November and December January is pretty <laughs> calm although I guess the conventions are starting back up we would normally have a convention this weekend or next weekend but there's a, a kerfuffle going on with that uh, that convention right now so maybe next year ooh that's pretty look how nice that's looking all right let's do this side let's see we'll do the middle part right here I'm trying to not I'm trying to go with the flow of not putting my hand on top of everything I've been really creative like this month I've you know for whatever reason I think I come up with more ideas in January does it does that happen to anybody else you know it just seems like oh there's all this stuff and and you get all these ideas and I don't know I mean it doesn't have to be about a YouTube channel I mean it can be about anything but well, you know, what you want to do with your house or how you want to organize this or is it because we've been stifled for a month and just had to think about Christmas and Thanksgiving and we haven't <laughs> had the oh, I missed some some back there oh, and this marker I tried to Oh, let's try this one. I think that one's drying out. And I put some in this one yesterday. I keep meaning to buy a... I want to buy one of those empty alcohol markers. Excuse me. And I keep forgetting to look for them. Because <laughs> I want to try to put um, odorless mineral spirits 
in one and see my only concern was will it dry out really fast and you just have to keep or is it about the same as an alcohol marker and it lasts for a while so if anybody's done that let me know <clears throat> thought about just using drying one of these out and just putting odorless mineral spirits in it but then I thought well maybe the residue would be weird I don't know maybe I shouldn't care I try not to mix potions you know lest I make some horrid poison That I was trying not to to do that. And look what I did! Right over top. <laughs> but that's okay. It didn't hurt anything. It dries pretty fast. That's the nice thing is that you don't have to wait for it to dry. So this is a glass vase, and I could make it a solid color, but I decided to make it glass. Uh, and I just basically put a light color brown and then I'm going to put another color over top like a greenish color to kind of make it look like glass I may use a, a glaze pen we'll see how I feel about it I need to put a little more color in that space right there sometimes it's hard to get in the crevices Oh, these tiny lilies. See, I forgot that right there. So I have to go back and put some pencil in there. Let's do this door over here. So far, so good. Looking nice. And it's it's like the alcohol marker that doesn't bleed. That's the one thing. I mean, you can get it over the edges. Depending on where it is, you can just cover that up when you go back and do other stuff. <clears throat> but, all in all, it's pretty good. I may have to come up. I can't decide. I thought I picked a color for the hat, but now I can't decide. <clears throat> I need to make that look a little bit. Oh, that was sky. Crap. Well, poop. What am I going to do now? <laughs> uh, maybe nobody will notice. I don't know if I can get any of it out of there. I can probably lighten it up a little bit, but not much. As long as I do it while it's still wet. Just pick it up. And take it over here. It's making it a little better. I mean, I'm sure it's not the end of the world, but darn it. Ah, I got it on the edge of my paper. This is what I do. I think that's about as good as it's going to get, but I lightened it up some, so we'll see. Maybe nobody will notice that I goofed right there. you're like I know when you're looking at your picture you're like oh my gosh everybody's gonna notice and then 
honestly, they wouldn't know if you didn't point it out. So you're like, well, darn, why did I point it out? Because <laughs> I'm so self-conscious about it. <clears throat> I feel like I'm not talking very loud today. Although my nose is all stopped up, which is not helping. Not really stopped up, but... Ugh, very, uh... Phlegmy. I used, uh... I wanted the chairs to kind of look mahogany-ish. Not really mahogany, because you wouldn't have mahogany chairs outside, but, you know. Redwood, that's what I'm thinking of. Cedarwood, redwood. Because you see that a lot. <clears throat> Amazing. That's looking nice. I like it. Let's see. If I can get both of these chairs in here. Um, oops. Kind of made that a little bit streaky. You, you can make it streaky if you're not careful. Like if you get too much... Um, ink tints on there and you mush it around just make sure you make it smooth then since I'm using that looks like black but that is actually a brown underneath there they have this <laughs> ink tints has this really dark brown called bark Fabulous dark brown. I'm going to use the other end of this to do this. Used a little mahogany on the chair leg. Oh. I realize I forgot this over here. That little spot. Let's do the chair leg. Do that. Ooh, it looks nice. It looks very dark under the table, which is what I wanted. Uh, then I gotta move this because. My hand works this way. Ta-da! Now we can do this chair and the table. I just can't decide if I want those to be like... You know, I thought I could do something cutesy. Like... <laughs> kind of like they have plastic in the middle of them and it's shiny and it's all hearty like for Valentine's Day oh and I can't decide what color I want the cushions to be This chair. To finish this chair. We didn't finish it the last time. I just moved on to something else. I probably should have sped this up. <laughs> it's not taking me. Uh, I'll cover that up with green. Ink tense does cover really well, I think. Okay, did I get all the spots? Alright, so this is our picture 
so far. Now I think we can start using some colors. So we got all the wood done. Yeah, I think that this video is long enough for today because it's about an hour. And uh, next week we will finish up the the roof and, and the tablecloth. And I know what colors I want the flowers. I have to decide those. I have to decide colors for the pots too. Uh, and the sky, I kind of like, do I want to do the sky blue or do I want to do it like a different color? So um, I'm trying to decide on colors for the sky. So if you have any suggestions for colors for the sky, let me know. Because, you know, um, I don't know what color the tablecloths are going to be yet or all this stuff in here. And I have to go put the brown in there. Um, but... I know my flowers on the yard were going to be yellow. The roses are red. I think these are going to be yellow. Or I could make them pink or purple. You know. Um, so, let me know what you think. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for coloring and drinking tea with me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.